Okay, so now we have all the photographs. I've been out in the field. I have taken a lot of photographs. I have my camera, my memory card full with photographs. And now it's time to go and post process this in Linkios and in Photoshop and in Lightroom. All right, so I'll show you how I did my post processing of this untracked Andromeda Galaxy photographs that I took that I showed in the previous video. I took roughly six to 700 frames and 20 dark frames, and then I stacked them together in Linkios. So this is like the entire process. However, since it's such a tedious process when, I, when you do this unstacked, I had to like limit it. So I prepared uh, just a few of the frames that I have. Uh, like too serious uh, because what I did was like I, I took like uh, 10 or 20 shots in one series and uh, you can see the galaxy moves a little bit on every frame and then I just like after a f like 10 or 20 frames I had to just realign and then it starts over again the line that you're seeing passing over there is a satellite. So first what I do is that I pick my first frame and then I zoom in to roughly 200% because uh, that's somewhere in the area of uh, my cropping. And I'm looking at the quality of the photograph. Am I seeing star trails? Am I seeing something shaky? Am I seeing something blurry? And if I do, I just deselect the entire, the entire uh, photograph. And uh, then I'm just looping and I can see some trailing here, but uh, I can't uh, do that much about that. And uh, I'm just going through each and every photograph. There aren't that many photos here, so it's uh, quite all right. I'm just wanting to show you like the process. So I do this for like 1200 photographs and it's an extremely tedious process. But here you can see on the other series here that this is this image is very shaky and very blurry. So I'm just gonna deselect this one to remove it and then I have the same problem here. This one is okay I guess, yeah. It's a bit blurry, it's like, you know, I, I see two stars here so I'm gonna deselect this one as well. This one, you can see the stars are not perfectly round. So I would have deselected this, but since we only have like 30 light frames or something, this one creating like a max of 30 seconds exposure, I'm going to keep it so we can get some kind of image from this. Um, here, I'm going to deselect this. This is definitely not acceptable. And this is really nice. This is a good frame. The stars are round and uh, everything seems to be sharp. And this is not good. Okay. And then we go to the darks. So I've chosen like five darks uh, from my dark frames. Dark frames are like calibration frames. So I'm just gonna put it in like a Andromeda test. And I export them as TIFF files because that's how I want them. Uh, no compression, 16 bits depth, and they are off. So there are 32 files going out and five of them are darks. So I have 27 uh, light frames going out and the light frames are at 1.6 seconds f2.8 at ISO 4000. And I'm using my 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 L series lens version 2 at 200 millimeter. So here they are. Here are the frames and you can see there are some trees here in the lower right corner but that's okay I'm just going to frame the galaxy anyways uh, next thing is start of Linkios and uh, what I usually do is that I take the dark frames and I'm just knowing that those are three four five these are the five dark frames and uh, just to see, look at them for safety. Yeah, this seems very dark. And I'm just gonna stack them. So this one, this will create like one final stacked dark frame image. And you can see here that there's some noise in this. And 
I think this is what's being reduced or deducted from the final image, all this noise here. But uh, I am not uh, entirely certain about that. Uh, like the process of how all these calibration frames work. So here are my light frames, the all 27 of them. And usually, I like, as I said, in my image, I had like 600 photographs. Um, so what I'm doing here now is that I am finding the galaxy and I'm not going to do anything at this point other than select a small box of where I want the, the, the software to try to align these photographs because now they have to be aligned. And as I mentioned in the previous video, when the galaxy is behaving like uh, the sky, like the light, the, the night sky is behaving in normal, like the, it's just moving in one direction. The stacking problem doesn't have any problems finding and uh, aligning it. But when you have like several series and you kind of realign everything manually, then the stacking software do get some problems. So I'm just gonna go with this and see where it takes me and just click align and the software will start working, trying to find the best alignment on each and every photograph. And when it turns green, it means that it has successfully aligned the photograph. Um, but that's not entirely true because sometimes it's really bad at lining and it has made it green. So I'm going to have to do some manual labor on this one as well. So here we are, and here's like, now you can see that whenever I choose another image, you'll see that the box contains the same information, at least for most parts. If I go to the next series, you see there was a small rotation there, meaning that if I was going to stack this image, and this one took me a long time to understand. So when I'm stacking, I have to choose like the area of interest to stack, so I'm just picking something up now without any because this is not going to be the final stack you'll see that there are some star trails here especially out in the out in the corners here um, and I'm don't liking I'm not liking it that much however it seems like the center is okay not good but it's okay so if I go back to the align face here what I generally do when I see the rotation on every frame here, like this rotation here, this small rotation, uh, uh, I gen generally just take like the frames that are perfectly aligned and then I stack them and I remove them. And then I take the next sequence that is perfectly aligned and then I stack them and I remove them. So I'm just doing this. So this one has a little, little bit of rotation, but it's not gonna be noticeable. So I'm going to take this and I'm selecting the area where I wanna want the software to stack. It's just like a drawing a box like this, like I did with the align. It doesn't have to be the same as the alignment, just this is the stacking. And then I stack these images and I will end up with this final stack image. And what I'm going to do here is that I am going to save this image and I'm going to save it as stack one with a format of TIFF. And I'm going to stack these two. Save image, stack two, same parameters. Here they are, here is uh, stack image one and stack image two. Now what I'm doing here is that I'm using one as like the template. So I'm taking layer I'm taking image one and I'm pasting it on top of image two and you can see the rotation here so what I want to do is I want this layer to be aligned with this layer because the software is not good at that so I'm taking the top layer and the real layer that I want aligned on top and I'm putting it to opacity of like I don't know 50 percent and then I just transform it until the images are aligned and I'm saving this as stack two which is the same settings as before. So I have saved them and I'm going back to Linkios now. And I'm not going to need uh, this one because the calibration on the dark frames is already done. And I'm just going to open up a new one. 
And here they are. Um, I got one and two here. There you see there's, I didn't do this perfectly, but I did this good enough. And um, you can see that stack two is also a bit blurry, so that's not good, but it is what it is right now. So I'm doing it one more time. I'm just gonna let the software align this one. And I'm selecting a box here to stack. I'm saving this image and I'm gonna save it like final. Um, yeah, final Andromeda on the desktop as a TIFF. So uh, this is like the final image and you can see that it's still not very good you can't see that much so what we have to do now is that we have to stretch this image meaning that the the entire data that you have in this image uh, you can see this in the histogram is way to the left so what we have to do is start spreading or stretching this information out towards the entire or like the lower third of the histogram. You start off with levels. So I'm just going to create a copy of the background and I'm clicking level and I'm just taking the middle part here and pushing it towards the left. And you can see that there is information there and it's appearing when I'm pushing it. And I don't want to push this too hard. I have to do this like in smaller steps. So from one I'm going a little bit like Depending on how much noise I see here, this is like really not that uh, exact process. You just look at the image. So this is good for this one. And then I'm just going to remake it. And now you see the histogram has been stretched out a little bit. I'm just stretching it out a little bit more. And also on the dark side here, I'm going to push it in this direction. So it gets a little bit darker. So the darks are still dark. I don't want to do this too much because I can start cutting off data on, on the lower part end of this histogram. And I don't want that. So I'm just, I usually just put in the number two just to make it a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to do this process a little bit more like this. And after a while, when I feel like, okay, this is like good enough, I am switching over to the adjustments layer and I'm putting in a curves adjustment layer and I'm adding in more contrast to this photograph by darkening the darks a little bit and just like that and lighting up the lights a little bit. Basically I'm creating an S curve and then I create a new layer based on what I have here and uh, the next part is that I'm trying I want to align these three uh, these three histograms, like the, the red, green and the blue histograms, because I want this to be a little bit more correct color wise. So you see the red here and the blue here is like way off. They have an offset. So what I'm doing here is that I'm looking at the graph top graph here and I'm trying to align these. So when I push the red towards the dark side, I can see that they start to overlap and the green and the blue seem to be okay. It's a bit too green for me, so I'm going to see if I can fix that. And maybe just a tad more blue. The blue seems a bit too weak, this image. So somewhere around there. And then I'm just going to do another stretch. And I mean, you can continue doing this for as long as you want um, without introducing too much noise. And here you can see like the star trails here. This is because of the bad stacking. And you can also see that this image seems to be a little bit out of focus. And that is because I have uh, chosen like really bad light frames, but this is just for the sake of the of this demonstration and uh, yeah so this is basically it for Photoshop I could stretch it out a little bit more but I don't have that much data here so you can see that it turned it I'm like very close to creating a lot of noise when I start stretching even more but for this demonstration it's kind of cool that by just taking like 30 seconds exposure in like 27 times 1.6 you can still start to see things here so 
well, here we are in Lightroom Classic. This is the final stretched image from Photoshop. And what I usually do here is that I do some more adjustments. Um, I mean, maybe bump up the exposure a little bit. Uh, maybe the highlights, pull up the highlights just a bit because I like kind of like the core. I usually turn down the shadows quite a lot because they give me a little better background sky and doesn't affect the nebulosity or in this case the spiral arms that much and I mean I can just try and see what happens here this one increases the core a little bit more this one makes things a little bit darker uh, but the important thing here I mean I could also dehaze a little bit to pull up some more nebula but uh, maybe some like vibrance and saturation for the colors and uh, the I think the important part that I'm doing here is the noise reduction because you can see there's a lot of noise in this image and by just going to like 35 I think is a good spot you see that you get a little, little bit very little mm, the image gets a little bit uh, unsharp like out of focus but not that much here we are and this is like the final image um, and uh, yeah as I mentioned I mean I'm doing this for like 600 frames and the photograph is way better than this one and I think I have it here as well yeah here it is so this is my final photograph of the Andromeda Galaxy with 600 light frames or 630 stacked together in more position. I, I was a bit lazy after a while. I started to get tired and you can see it in the stars. They are not that perfectly aligned, but the galaxy is quite all right. And uh, I'm pretty happy with this image I think, um, considering I took this untracked with only 1.6 seconds exposures. Uh, but yeah, that's the process of how I take the Andromeda Galaxy. So I hope that I might have inspired you to go out and try this yourself. As you saw, this is like 30 shots only. Uh, so it's quite easy to go out and photograph like the Andromeda Galaxy or the Orion Nebula. It's, they're really bright deep sky objects out in the sky. Yeah, if you have any comments whatsoever on my process or any thoughts or suggestions on how to improve this, do tell me in the comment section. I am no expert in this. I'm just showing you how I'm working. I'm sure there are other ways of doing it. But uh, yeah, if you like this video, do give it a like. And if you want to see more photography related content in the future, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. All right, bye now.